Hi, Alexander. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm tired. I've, I have uh, been having trouble sleeping in the, in the bus. <laughs> For how long already? It's just been three days, but three days of no sleep is difficult for me these days. In the time that I saw you and now, I developed a pretty serious case of insomnia, but I cured it. But every time I don't sleep, it starts to come back. It's... How did you cure it? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, it was, it was difficult. I, I don't want to get too into it, but it was difficult. Yeah. But how uh, is it this life that 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 that, that uh, well that, that that triggers the isom, in, insomnia? I mean, touring uh, it, and different time zones and. What really tr what started it was mixing the third album. Uh, the third album was really difficult to to mix, and when you I was on a deadline, we were in a fancy studio, so I had to. Uh, hurry. So I was doing 18 hour days mixing and it wasn't going well. And uh, so we did about two months of 18 hour days and uh, and then I went right on tour. So the rest of the band is off, you know, in the Caribbean or something, drinking wine and I'm sitting there and then they're resting and then we all went, I went right on tour. and. Uh, yeah, it got pretty bad. It was really like bad insomnia for about three years. I had a kid, and uh, and that creates you know less sleep too. And yeah, it was uh, it was pretty bad. So then when I when I have a few days of no sleep, my body, my mind, especially if I have to sing, you know, like it's pretty uh, pretty draining. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> some of my best shows have actually been when I'm the most tired. So we'll see how tonight goes. But. Is it healthy for you, this, this, this life, this touring life? No, no, it's not healthy. And so what, but, but, but do you like it? I think that there's a, uh, a purpose to our band that, uh, that I, you know, I'm sure every band feels this way, I guess, but uh, I feel like we bring something uh, needed and, uh, and so I feel like I have a purpose when I do it. So that helps me get out. And what, what is the purpose, you think? What, what do people get, get out of your music? What do you hear? I used to say that we, our profession, my profession was to unprofessionalize professionalism. And I think in some way it still is, but uh, there's a, there's a liberation that I, I, I give myself permission to explore during shows. Um, I guess a, a, an unhinged thing that I force myself into. It doesn't come naturally, but I force myself. Because I have social anxiety as, as, as much as anybody else, you know, as much as the next guy. But. Uh, yeah, and then also because we don't have set lists and because we play with the crowd and because we make stuff up as we go along and we completely um, come up with new bits of songs right on the spot and, uh, and we don't play the tracks and backing tracks and it's all live and, um, and we take a lot of chances, chances that even you know a lot of people in the band our drummer came in the bus the other day was like, wow, holy shit, that was a little scary tonight because we did a completely different arrangement of a song that we'd never done before. And, and I was like, it's okay, I was scared too. I didn't know what was gonna happen, but it, it worked out. But those moments I think are special and I don't, I don't see that happening a lot. Um, for the most part, I feel like bands are expected to and do present a very refined, sort of like a reiterated version of themselves that they have found. They, you know, you repeat past successes and keep refining it and get the set list better and better and better. But for me, that's not interesting. So I think that we, we, we present something that's slightly different. Does it get easier to actually play this way live and to? 
You get more confidence, yeah, as you're able to communicate more with the band and you have better sort of instincts with each other. Yeah, you, you, you gain a little bit of confidence to go ahead and explore in the middle of a song. You know, it's not like we're a jam band. People sometimes think we're a jam band. We're, we're not a jam band. We're really just playing pop music, but within the pop song, we'll completely go somewhere else. And I think that's what's sort of fun, is to play with form within, within a form and completely break it apart. It's cool. What did the success of Home do to you? Um, I mean, it's nice, you know, the, that people, first of all, the song, that it's famous is one thing, but that the song means so much to people, people getting married to it, people crying to it, people, it getting them, a lot of people telling us stories of their parents dying or a brother dying or, or them going through a traumatic experience or having cancer and recovering or um, a lot of these things that they connect with that song make that song uh, still so important to me to sing, you know, even after Jade left and uh, in fact after she left it's become in some ways even more precious because the lyrics home is whenever I'm with you when we're on tour home really is the best I ever feel on tour is when we're on stage playing for the audience so in other words the stage is home and that interaction is home and so I get to say home is whenever I'm with you and look at the audience and yeah. say it and um, but does it also bring you back to when she was in the band yeah yeah of course I always think about that um, I always think about that but uh, why did she leave then was it you know I mean there's a number of reasons that I won't go into but I think at a certain level the stuff I can talk about is just that this band is a large band with many many talented people in it and uh, and for a long time, less so now with this new album, but for a long time I think, yes, everyone comes in and contributes their part, and so everyone feels a sense of ownership of the songs, but very much they were my songs, and everybody in the band wants to express their songs and their being, you know? And so I think, in some ex to some extent, when someone leaves the band, you can just understand that it was time for them to sort of spread their wings and go explore their music. Do you still talk to her? Occasionally. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you said you 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 mentioned the recent album Persona. Yeah. Do I pronounce it right or is it, yeah yeah? Yeah, Persona. Yeah. Some, persona. I left it open Person A Persona, yeah. but yeah. Um, when during the re the writing or the recording of this album did you come up with this with this album title? I came up with it before we even started recording the album, uh, largely because I was... Um, when I go on stage, I'm not putting on a persona. I'm, I'm, I have a persona when I'm off stage more than when I'm on stage. Like wow. I, because of the general social con contract, as uh, I think Rousseau would say. Yeah. It's like the, you know, the certain behavioral norms that you expect from other people that you apply to yourself and peer pressure and these kinds of things and to, when I go on stage I go I allow myself you give yourself permission or anyone when you go to a festival you give yourself permission to be more wild more yourself more maybe the way you acted when you were a child you know and so the idea that uh, oh he puts on a great persona when he's on stage and the alter ego and and all that if I was putting on an alter ego when I go on stage, I would be shit. I would, I would be a shitty performer, I think, uh, for me anyway. The only way to really have a great performance is to basically kind of emotionally strip down to your bare ass. And, and so in that sense, there is no persona on stage. And that's why I wanted to cross off the Edward Sharp and kind of address that. Yeah. Does it mean that maybe Edward Sharp is, is gone then now for you or? I mean, look, I, I tried to change the name before we put out the first album because I knew it was going to be a problem. 
But the band wanted it. They're like, no, nah, it's a cool name. It sounds good. And, and, you know, I'd come up with all these other names and it was like, what about this name, that name? And, you know, and they convinced me to keep it. Um, Do you regret it? Keeping it? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Because I think um, because you crossed it out, so it's now just the Magnetic Zeros, if you look at the album cover. Yeah. Um, is it something that, well, the songs that you wrote, I mean, how long in your life was the Edward Sharp persona um, something that you were, uh, uh, that, that you felt easy with? How long was it? I think just the, just maybe the first half of the tour, the, the, the writing of the first album and then into the first half of touring the first album. I remember uh, writing the first album. In the beginning, everything was uh, in the beginning. Everything was imaginary. Uh, the band was imaginary. There was no band. I would do the horn parts with my voice, and I would pretend to do these background vocals and imagine that we had a very large band. That I had a very large band of people, mostly largely that I hadn't met yet. And I would imagine, like on the song Jangling, I would imagine this this guy. I, I felt like I had kind of went out to the desert and and had my own sort of like Moses experience. Um, and in some ways, I did. You know, I, I gave up most everything in my life, and and so in some ways, I felt like I was recreating myself. And. Uh, And the name Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros actually was from even predated that by like four years. I had, I was writing a novel and I'd come up with the name and and I started a MySpace page back in the day, Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros, and I put up these demos that never ended up coming out. So it was just a name I had, but I did imagine myself as someone better than what I was as, as, as a more idealistic version of myself. Because at the time I was fairly lost and, uh, and felt fairly disconnected from myself. So I think in some ways Alex Ebert or whatever I was, I, I felt like uh, I didn't know who that was anymore. And this other name sort of allowed me to step into a new version of myself that was actually ironically truer to what I felt like I actually was. And so for that time being, it felt like a, a pathway back to myself. But then eventually when people started asking me about who is Edward Sharp and the persona and oh, he's putting on this uh, persona, then all of a sudden I started to get self-conscious about that and feel like, wait a minute, I think it's being misunderstood because it was actually the opposite. Yeah. I was actually becoming more of myself through this path. And when, um, when was this turning point? I think it was, you know, somewhere along, somewhere after the, we went and did this thing called South by Southwest in America yeah. and we, we were the, the band of the year or whatever, they usually choose a band that they think is the best and we were uh, that band. And then, uh, and then we started getting media attention and, and then it started to, I started to realize that people were misinterpreting the journey, yeah. And you actually, you released your solo album, Alexander, 2011. Yeah. I think that was around the same time, right? Yeah, it was just after that, yeah. yeah. And um, did you ever think of maybe, well, putting an end to Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros and maybe yeah. perform under your own name yeah. and maybe with a band or? Yeah, 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 I mean, I've thought of that a lot. <laughs> But there's, there's something, there's something special that we've created, I think, that uh, I'm not ready to turn my back on, I guess. And and yet now, after this album, now literally, I think every single person in the band is working on a solo album. 
So coming up, we may actually take a break, and I, yeah. including myself, I'm working on so, another solo album. And uh, yeah, I think about that. Uh, but the most important thing to me, name, shne, you know, it, it's irrelevant. The most important thing to me is to have music that communicates and that allows me to be the, the most, to, to, to speak the most powerfully that I can. And, um, and I think in a lot of ways, especially live, this band does that, you know, regardless of the iterations or the name or whatever. It's, it's something about the, uh, the music we create that especially on stage uh, allows me to, to really feel it. So.